Hello dear ones, it's Alice, I'm of the stars, and I'd just like to talk for a minute or two about the concept of distance with regard to chaotic nodes which take place during solar events such as the recent gateway and uh, other types of solar events such as coronal mass ejections, CIRs, and um, solar winds in coming to Earth. Um, so as we become more and more electromagnetically sensitive, uh, as, the, as the incoming light um, offers a, us change-ups in our electromagnetic field, and as those fields clear of dense uh, misqualified energies, then it becomes more and more uh, obvious to us uh, uh, how how our own energy field interacts with those of others, especially during these solar events. So that's what I'm talking about right right now, and particularly with regard to the recent um, gateway, which was uh, like a, an eclipse gateway of the sun, which is really cool. It just took place, and even after the the final eclipse, the second eclipse, the uh, the energies of the eclipse continued to affect Earth's electromagnetic field for a few days after that, a couple of days after that. So, and also they started a little earlier than we all thought that they might. So, so that's something to take into consideration for the future gateways uh, this year and next year. Anyway, uh, um, you know, everybody's electromagnetic field, every person on Earth, their electromagnetic field uh, interacts with those of, of other beings on Earth, including the trees and even the grass and the flowers, the shrubs, and most especially the people. And also the electromagnetic fields that gather around edifices because of people's thought forms while there. For instance, the electromagnetic field caused by the thought form of a church. And so, mountains, you know, have wonderful electromagnetic fields to consider. So, so we're bathed in a sea of electromagnetism, which includes the overall magnetosphere of Earth and and the individual electromagnetic fields of all of the beings that are in it. And during a, a solar event, the the atmosphere of the uh, of Earth, the elect the magnetosphere of Earth becomes more turbulent, which allows it's good because it allows more clearing and more upgrades and more uh, changes of the light. It allows for Earth to become ever a more resplendent and majestic place and more uh, more joy to be in coming to all the beings here. So, but um, as we become more and more electromagnetically sensitive, we begin to become aware of and to notice uh, the distance that we need to be from uh, uh, localized turbulence in the uh, magnetosphere in order to effectively uh, transform the energies to the light. Um, so this distance that we feel has of course to do with the amount of turbulence at a specific locus and also with the amount of the, with the strength of the energy in our own central vertical power current. So those two things are, are, are both very important. It has also to do with time. Uh, in a particular timeline, it has to do with the temporal distance we are from the uh, electromagnetic disturbance or anomaly. So even a day or two later, after a disturbance has been felt, there will be a disturbance in that timeline, in that uh, geographic locus. So, and with time, that, that will diminish. And so, 
on day one of an electro, a small, say, uh, electromagnetic anomaly, such as might be experienced by a person having, having an upset or an angry incident, say, uh, in a supermarket or on the street or a car accident, something small like that. I mean, relatively small, very important to the person, but for the world, a, a relatively uh, confined uh, uh, anomaly. Uh, the very first day, there will be shock waves, quite a few shock waves out of that uh, chaotic node, I feel. This is my feeling about it, how I sense it. Then the second day, there will be less and the third day even less. So, uh, and a week later it will be much better. So, so one might have, in order to preserve the stability of our own um, electromagnetic field as, as um, transformers to the light, we might need to be at a, a, a greater distance from, because we're empaths, you know, and telepaths, our clair skills, require that we be at a greater geological distance from that anomaly the first day, or that our uh, vertical power current be stronger as through meditation or sitting in a quiet spot that first day, then it needs to be on subsequent days. So, so what I'm suggesting is to become, to place awareness on that uh, the importance of distance, or str of strengthening the electro the uh, elect stability of our own EMF, uh, when we sense that there are um, even the very smallest chaotic nodes around. So, uh, I had an uh, an incident that happened during the the recent very wonderful gateway, and it had to do with someone uh, that I knew very casually as an acquaintance. Who, who kind of lost it? You know, they. I would say temporarily. I see this quite frequently. People will be going along on a, like a steady keel, and they will have like some tiny like inflection point or a trigger that uh, that can be activated towards a, like uh, unusual uh, upset during a chaotic node during a solar event. And so this person that I knew had a, like a, a tiny, a very tiny um, trigger that was activated by the turbulent energies in the atmosphere on a particular day last week. And, and that caused them to behave aggressively, territorially aggressively towards me to the point where I had to, even with a martial arts training, you know, like that, I had to, uh, I, I had to under undertake evasive maneuvers three times in order to get out of the way of the, of the upset and anger or territorial aggression that that person was feeling uh, very atypically at that time. All right, so, so, so then when I left the place where that person was, I assessed the ongoing um, turbulence regarding that, because I, mean, I was a trigger. <laughs> so, so, and in a, with the assistance of other people who were at that location, because that person returned to that location apparently daily, um, through Claire, like talking with other people at that location, uh, I, I assessed that it wouldn't be good to return to that location for a while until things reverted to normal. So I, I came up with a plan for my daily schedule that um, that involved going to some other place instead, the same activity in another place. And this turned out to be really great because over there, there was very positive energy. Uh, there was not that chaotic node. There was none of that upset or anger or territorial aggressiveness. Nothing was going on. So, so the geographic locus of a, of a node is an important thing to consider. So, uh, so there's that. And uh, let's see, there was another uh, incident recently. So then, after the gateway closed, there were a couple of days, unanticipated days, when uh, 
when there were astral stories that would start up, glommings of like uh, thought energy and emotional energy with different groups of people just spontaneously coalescing uh, thought forms and creating astral stories. Uh, and, and as that happened, I noticed uh, it, it was very important to be in a quiet place. Um, a very quiet place, both newospherically and environmentally, where I could counter those stories that had to do with soul wounding with energy of transformation. So the astral stories in this case are the fourth dimensional counterpart of some of these physical incidents that were taking place roundabout during the gateway. And the physical incidents included, besides like temper flare-ups and so forth, they included uh, some unusual traffic accidents that I've discussed in another place um, to do with running into parked or grazing or running into parked cars, which is just doesn't happen in my area, but I saw two such instances during the gateway. So I would say uh, that during gateways, it's very important to seek those quiet places, even if we're excellent drivers, I think, and to stay away from motor noises. Yeah, all kinds of motor noises. I don't know about you all, but for me, as is frequently the case during gateways and solar events, my, um, my internet went completely down, it's still down, my phone went down, it's still down, and then I had a cell phone and it was doing extraordinarily unusual things during all that time and thereafter. So just to let you know, in case that's happening to you, um, it's not like, it's, it's not good to take things like that uh, in causal ways as, as like, plots of the dark or anything like that, that what the, we used to call the dark network. It, it, there's another way of looking at it, a synchronous way of looking at it. It's a blue jay up there. <laughs> I don't know if I can, let's see. Where's that blue jay? So, so anyway, you can look at it causally and think that people are doing things to you, but this is very unproductive. It produces fear and anger and, and emotions like that during a solar event. Instead, it's important to know that as we're doing our upgrades and downloads of light during a solar event, the electromagnetic field of the heart is changing quite a, quite a lot. It's constantly changing, and so it's not like, it's good to stay away from electronic equipment during that time, even electricity, I feel. It's more productive of the, the updates, the changes in our, in our soul field, in an entire electromagnetic field and, and our soul field, the whole thing, the whole gizmo, okay? So, so these things happen, and then when the gateway is over, or the solar event finishes, Everything will be, uh, all of our internet will come back on, either through a repair person coming in or else spontaneously so. And our equipment will work once more and we'll be able to communicate properly with other people. It happens time and again, and it's not a great concern. It's just to understand that it's a way of God saying to us that during these events, we need to be with Him. We need to align with God, and not so much so with the what, what they used to call the pomp and circumstance of life in general with other people. That's how I take that. So, until until next time. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Bye bye. <laughs>